Hi, I'm Kathy Wilhoyt. Some of you know me. I grew up here. I'm going to be on Ken Boxer Live on TVSB. Watch it. Watch it. Yes. <laughs> Terry Riken Realtor proudly presents Ken Boxer Live. From the American Riviera in Santa Barbara, California, it's Ken Boxer Live, Santa Barbara's one and only entertainment talk show. Let's welcome the host of the show, Ken Boxer. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Wow. I'm Ken Boxer, and this is Ken Boxer Live. Let me introduce you to my very lovely and talented co-host, Kate Imperio, everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. I haven't seen you for a while. I know. How have you managed during the fire? You're, you're okay. You're I'm safe. okay. I'm downtown. Okay. So far, it hasn't hit that area. Well, you, well <laughs> let's hope and pray for all the people that are Definitely you know, dealing with evacuation. that. Definitely. Tell us, though, um, our, our guest still came to Santa Barbara, just, you despite know, despite the heat, despite, despite the fire, um, they did maybe run out of gas on the way here. Not sure about that. <laughs> and um, we have actress, singer, songwriter, and Santa Barbarian Kathleen Wilhoy. This is my third time doing it. All right, yes. Ken Boxer Live is brought to you by the following sponsors. Palazzo Italian Restaurant. People don't leave there hungry or thirsty. Harbor View Inn. Welcome to Santa Barbara's premier four diamond luxury boutique oceanfront hotel. The Eagle Inn, a family owned hotel near the beach in Santa Barbara. And now back to our show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back. Joining us tonight is the actress, singer, and songwriter who has entertained us for many years and whom I have personally wanted to interview for a very long time. And tonight, it's finally happening. So I'm very excited to say, making her very first appearance on our show, let's welcome the very talented Kathleen Wilhoyt, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, I know you? You said, you said, in the intro, Kate said that you're a Santa Barbarian. I know, she called me Kate, Caitlin? Caitlin, Caitlin Jenner, sorry about that. I am a Santa Barbarian. Um, like I was Kathy Wilhoit my whole Santa Barbara career and then moved down to Los Angeles and decided to be an actress, very serious actress, so I made everyone call me Kathleen. So my Santa Barbara friends will often say like, well, hello, Kathleen Wilhoit. They make jokes about <laughs> Now she's like trying to be a big time actress. Well, before we, t we, we're gonna, before we go there with your acting in Los Angeles and all, I wanted to find out about how you got into it. So let's go back a few years to where I heard a story that at uh, the San Barbara Bowl was an experience that uh, uh, you'll never forget. Why don't you tell everybody about this? Sure. Um, I sang uh, in the All Saints by the Sea Church Choir, and uh, they were singing with Karen Carpenter, the kids section, which is the la, 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 you know that <laughs> part? Some of you are probably a little young, but oh, Kate, Karen you Carpenter was an artist in the 70s. <laughs> wait, let's see, wait a second. Do you remember the Carpenter? I do remember the oh, Carpenter. Thank God. Good, good. Oh, thank, thank God. God. We're all saved. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, so I remember standing backstage, and then uh, Karen Carpenter introduced us, and we all walked onto the stage. However, Prior to walking on the stage, my mother told me, no matter what you do, you've got to pull your knee socks up, because I was a tomboy, and I used to have them bunched up around my ankles all the time. I never, this was in the 70s, that was the style, right? You had to pull your knee socks up. So <laughs> <laughs> I walked out on the stage. Karen Carpenter is a drummer, so she starts the song. Do, 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 do. It's like a pan flute or something. Do, do, do. I look down, socks are bunched up around the ankles. I panic. And I said, stop, stop, <laughs> she stops, the band sort of drops oh, out. The whole band <laughs> oh my God. This I didn't know, the whole band stopped. Band drops out, then I pull the knee socks up, 
one after the next. And then I said, all right, we're good to go. <laughs> and, and what a great story. Right? Oh, it's more. Okay. I got to get to the, the juice. Okay, okay. The juice is, um, how many people at the Santa Barbara County Bowl? About 3,500. 3,500 people. When I said, we're good to go, they laughed like a river. Like, yeah. They laughed. And it was, that was when I knew I wanted to go be in show business. Because I like this. 3,500 people <laughs> laughing at the same there, time. That's a good There's story. the explanation. Where is that, is that adrenaline rush? Right? Oh, is, is it's that, just, you know about getting laughs, right? That, I mean, you hopefully. know, everybody has, an, <laughs> yeah, exactly. everybody has an image of what it's like to bomb. And then yeah. I would say that 3,500 people laughing at, at a thing you said would be the opposite of bombing. It was heaven on What earth. did uh, Karen Carpenter say? Did she say anything? Oh, I think she probably, you know. Probably Who's this kid? Yeah, <laughs> Who's this kid stopping the show? <laughs> what about Karen Carpenter? So talented. Yeah. Love yeah. But so then you did a lot of theater in high school. Yes, that was sort of the start. Then I knew I was like, oh, I like this whole audience performer <laughs> thing. I love that feeling. So then I just did play after play. I had, the, I had my friends Cheryl Mulder, Kim Olson, Heather Schatz, and I were in a singing group called the Santa Barbara, uh, the Boogie Woogie Bugle Girls. And uh, the Santa Barbara Boogie Woogie Bugle <laughs> Girls. And we used to sing all over, you know. Um, and so I was in that. And then also I always sang in choirs and did musicals, Santa Barbara Youth Theater. And, and uh, Rick Mochler was uh, my high school director. And Did you ever do anything with Gary Goddard? Uh, yeah, he was okay. my first manager, actually. Oh, Gary really? Goddard. Okay. Um, I never did any plays with him in Santa Barbara. But when I moved down to Los Angeles, uh, Gary was actually the person who called me and said, there's an audition, they want a, 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 an 18-year-old to play 16. Uh, would you do it? And at the time, I had long red hair and braids. I used to smoke clove cigarettes, and my voice was really husky. Mm -hmm. And I used to wear this tweed hat all the time. And so I went into this audition, and uh, I thought that they had already cast me, which is always good in an audition, because <laughs> I just assumed it was good to go. I didn't even know them. <laughs> and then I got the part. So that was on a Friday, and I was shooting on a Monday. And that uh, uh, started my illustrious film career. Of course, it's like the worst movie that was ever made, but <laughs> I, I worked very hard on it. <laughs> well, let's uh, actually, we have a clip. Television. Not from that. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible movie. We'll moment. find it, though. I don't recommend it. In fact, um, you can give us kind of a setup for this. Oh, sure. For this uh, you, you've got a clip of, uh, I did a show called ER years ago where I played um, Sherry Stringfield's messed up sister. And um, and I, I, I was, it's the first audition I ever went to where I felt like uh, you got your nutty, drug addict, alcoholic, no boundaryless chick, I think this one's mine. <laughs> and so I got the part, and, uh, and so this is, a, this, is a, this is a scene. Okay, it. Catherine Wilhoyt, let's watch. Where's Dip? I don't know. Wasn't he supposed to come home with you? Well, his apartment's empty and he's gone, so I guess not. Oh, man, cheer up. I've been dumped by lots of guys. I got over it. You'll get over it, too. Hey, that's my robe. May I borrow it? Yes, you may. Thank you. <laughs> that music's pretty. It's a gift. Ooh. Mm, you know, it reminds me of that, that merry-go-round we used to ride. <laughs> that looks so cool. Oh, I got you something. Oh. Oh, it's pretty. Susan. <laughs> Thank you. You'll have to share it with the baby. <laughs> We're naming it after you. What baby? I'm pregnant. <laughs> okay. If you're just joining us, Kathleen Wilhoyt has been our guest this half hour on our show, but she's going to entertain us tonight. If you could, Kathleen, tell us what we're about to hear. Oh, uh, this is a song I wrote for my friend Rial. I go to Cal State Long Beach. I'm getting my master's degree. And uh, one day in my class taught by Alex Billings, she's an amazing professor and actress, she had a spotlight in the center of the room and we were each told to bring a talisman. And my friend Rial 
brought this little skinny white stone and he set it down in the middle of the spotlight and he told the story about his, his mother giving him this, it was a petrified feather. And, um, and when he told the story, you know, he grew up in the Crucian, what is it, the Caribbean. And um, I was just very moved by this story and I told him after class, I was like, dude, I gotta write a song about that. So, so this is a song I wrote for him. Flops towel around your neck. I lost you were sunbathing on the deck. A man in a straw had woke me up with a good morning. You walked off with your laughing bikini girl. The straw hat man asked if you were the center of my world. I said that man's my little baby. He pulled a stone out from a velvet bag, put it in my hand, said I had to have it. I looked down, didn't know how much that stone would one day mean. He said two thousand years ago, a seagull lost its feather flying low, trying to beat the weather, caught up in the about a rock. <laughs> it was about a rock. It was beautiful. Do, do you have that recorded? <laughs> I don't. I just told my friend Danny Pinelli that I wanted to, he said we recorded it. You should. Thank and you. In fact, don't you have some CDs? 
I do. I have um, a CD called Pitch Like a Girl uh, and also another one called Shiva. But I'm, I'm going to, I have feel, I've recorded some stuff recently at this place called The Village. My friend, he owns it. He was like, you got to, you know, and we recorded all this material. And then, of course, I get distracted by sparkly things. Mm -hmm. and then <laughs> like this show. I forget, I didn't mix it. And so uh, my friend just recently t said that he would uh, help me mix it. And so maybe I'll put something out soon. I have a question for you. Something Please. a little different. We're going to get back. You're going to delight us with another song in just a moment. But I wanted to know, you know, um, Roadhouse, the Patrick Swayze movie, which you co-starred in with him, uh, is having a, a remake. And I heard wow. that um, Ronda Rousey, the former UFC, is that UFC, the fighter, um, she's going to be actually playing the part of Patrick Swayze's part what? in that movie. She's got the part. I wanted to know what your opinion. What do you think? Is she, do you want, first, should there be a remake? And second, uh, do you think Ronda Rousey would be a good um, replacement for Patrick Swayze? Well, first of all, the story is about a philosopher. I think he's got a PhD in philosophy, and what he really wants to do is be a bouncer. So it's a strange story, and uh, people seem to love it, which is fantastic. And Jeff Healy, that was amazing, and you know Sam Elliott, and there's right. all these great it replaced people in every it. But let's just talk about the the pitch meeting where the guys like, see, get this, this is the twist. He's a PhD, but what he really wants to do is stand at a door and make sure people are 21 <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> and over. And if you're a little rascally, we take you out the bar. I mean, that's <laughs> funny to me. That's a weird movie to remake but it was a huge hit, so I totally understand it. Now, as far as Ronda Rousey con is concerned, I think it's spectacular <laughs> because I uh, am a huge proponent, uh, you know, as a, as a I was a uh, tomboy growing up in Santa Barbara, and um, my husband over there, we went to see Wonder Woman recently, and there's the opening scene in Wonder, well, not the opening scene, but the first time she fights, um, a bunch of guys are saying, you can't do that, you're outnumbered, you can't do it. And she f says, I think I can. She proceeds to kick massive amounts of rear end. <laughs> and I found myself with leaking eyes. Like, I started to weep. Why? Because you just don't get to see women, powerful women. Like, And the fact is, that does happen. We all know chicks like that, that can actually take guys Rhonda. on. Ronda Rousey, you know, I wouldn't trifle with. I wouldn't call her chubby in the buns because she <laughs> is spectacular. And uh, I've seen her, actually, because my husband, whatever, he's like, you got to see this chick. She does some break your arm move that will make you puke. I was like, I'm done. I never want to see that again because, you know, when their arms are not in the right mm, shape. Right. It's horrifying. But you know what we, what we do want to see again is another song. So we have somewhere oh, your guitar That was here. not horrifying. <laughs> There Look at this go. star. Thank you, darling. Oh, how funny. I have my guitar right here. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> it's right. It's in tune. Okay, what are we about to hear? In this? Well, uh, this is a song I wrote. I was really into Bloodline. I love that show. And if you haven't seen it, it's spectacular. And Kyle, um, Kyle, what's his name? Chandler. Dave and I used to watch it, and uh, I'd always turn to Dave, and I was like, that guy has the worst life. Like, everything terrible happens to him. And you think, how could it get worse? And it just gets worse and worse and worse. And simultaneously, I started to miss this friend that um, I, uh, uh, I hate her. And um, <laughs> You're allowed uh, when, to. when hell freezes over, perhaps, then we will work things out. But anyway, I missed you know, you miss people, even though they aren't great fits. Anyway, so this is just, I, all that stuff goes in your brain as an artist or whatever, and percolates, and then out comes a song. So this is a song that uh, came out. Okay. okay. <laughs> like, wrap it up, baby. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm afraid to go to sleep at night. I might wake up. If I close my eyes and drift away, I might see you right on through the time I held my hand up and said, there's nothing you could ever do. I'm afraid to go to sleep. Wake up 
everybody. That was some powerful stuff. How, how long would it take for you to write that, the music and the lyrics? Just curious. Well, you know, once I, I, I uh, wrote the lyrics down, you know, I wake up in the middle of the night, I have a hard time sleeping, it just is my <laughs> trip. And so I have a notebook by my bed. And so I wrote down, I'm afraid to go to sleep at night. I like that. And then the next night, I'm like, oh, why are... And then I write down more lyrics, and then I go to my computer, and then I just sort of write out, a, you know, 25 verses, and I pick the best out of them that I like the most. Uh -huh. and, then, uh, and then I sat down with the guitar, and so the actual process, so I'd say you percolate, it's, it's in your brain, and then the actual process takes about an hour, 45 minutes. For me, I like it to move quickly, or else I judge it, and so... but. But then I rewrite and tweak and tweak and tweak. I mean, I had a different chorus, and then I was like, ah, I think it should turn around, you know, and say, like, because the truth is, like, you hate someone because you love them, right? So, and then I put, I put it on my Facebook, and somebody gave me criticism about, like, see, they said, I, you shouldn't say I hate you. And I was like, but that's what I feel. <laughs> I miss him, but I hate him. Like, you know, like, why can't you say I hate you? But, you know, I guess for songwriters, maybe they think that's too But you also work brutal. with an electric guitar as well. Right? Oh, well, you're, not, you're, I'm, you know, I'm hardly, as you may have noticed, <laughs> I'm hardly a guitar virtuoso. Generally speaking, I usually bring a guitar player with me because it makes me nervous. Uh, when I get nervous, too, I clam up on the thing. I don't know, and I've never had the patience to really practice like a lot of songwriters. <laughs> I just want to get it done, you know. So we got you out of your comfort zone today. You did, but I practiced. <laughs> I did. I, this one's like the latest song that I wrote. This one's hot off the press. I think I wrote about three weeks ago. And the other song I just wrote when I, grad, you know, finished my first year of uh, getting my master's at Cal State Long Beach. So. Would you have preferred a career starting in music before acting? You know what, I'm just going to be really honest with you. My husband and I hike every morning with our little pit bull, Carmen Lopez. And, uh -huh. um, and the truth is, you know what, I, uh, I really wish I was a rock star. I, I just, yeah. you know, like I saw Pink. Isn't she in our eyes, everybody? <laughs> yeah. You are a rock star. Absolutely. <laughs> you still can be. The world's no. changing. Long in the tooth. But, you know, it's okay. And my son is a brilliant songwriter. And... You know, and whatever. I mean, it's like my my dad writes songs on the uke, mm -hmm. and um, he's you know, and his he's. Well, an older gentleman. Well, we're so I happy. Won't tell everyone how we're old happy you, are you came here. We're happy you got oh, I'm here. Yes. Yes. We're you so great. Like I want to say thank you. It's so nice of you to be here. Thank you so thank much. You. It went by too quickly. As long as you come back. Of course. 
All right. So if you Kath have me. Kathleen <laughs> Wilhorn, everybody. Yeah, that. well, that's it for another edition of Ken Boxer Live. So if you want tickets to our show, and it's always a lot of fun, and we love having you here, go to KenBoxerLive.com, and uh, you'll be with us. One, one night, one show. It's a lot of fun. So for my guest, Kathleen Wilhoyt, as well as Kate Imperio, and my director, Nick Ferretti, and the entire KBL crew, I'm Ken Boxer. Good night, everybody. Ken Boxer Live is brought to you by the following sponsors. Terry Riken, your broker with a personal touch for all your real estate needs. Bank on Better, American Riviera Bank, with three locations to serve you. Palazzo Restaurant, where people don't leave hungry or thirsty. Harbor View Inn, Santa Barbara's premier four diamond luxury boutique oceanfront hotel. The Eagle Inn, a family-owned hotel near the beach in Santa Barbara. And by Petrini's Family Restaurant, La Quinta Inn and Suites. Taffy's Pizza, Country Catering, Meat Market and Deli, Lido's Takeout, Jack's Bagels and Bistro, Perfect Computers, the Ken Boxer Live musical theme composed and arranged by Mr. Michael J. Leslie. at Ken Boxer Live. I'm Baron Ron Heron. Good night, everyone.